So it's been about two or three months uh, since I put the new motor on the boat. So today's video is gonna be my pros and cons, likes, dislikes of putting a Suzuki 250 SS on my 2008 Ranger Z520. Overall, I'm super, super happy, but uh, we're out at the home lake, Smith Mountain, run around a little bit. We're gonna start looking for uh, some fish for fall tournaments, and uh, I'll give you guys the rundown on the motor that I bought uh, a couple months ago. So stay tuned. Uh, if you're in the market for a Suzuki, this is a good video to watch. I'll kind of give you the, the honest truth from a guy that's not affiliated with them, but uh, you know, wants you guys to make the, the best decision for you on a, on a motor. All right, well, like I mentioned, I have had my Suzuki for coming up on three months now. Uh, purchase that I went from an Evinrude that I blew up that was originally on my 2008 uh, Z520 Ranger boat and uh, switched to Suzuki for a few different reasons. So if you've watched my channel a little bit, you guys know I'm a guide out on Smith Mountain. So number one for me is not speed or hole shot or anything like that. It's reliability, durability, maintenance, warranty, all of those things um, are the most important to me, which might not be for, for everybody, but let me kind of start my thought process and work back from there. So with guiding, I wanted a long warranty. Suzuki's come with a five year warranty out the gate. They're not in the extended warranty game anymore. They're literally just, here's your five year warranty. Um, and, and roll with that. So Yamaha, Mercury, I think they start with three years and you guys have to extend it from there, which is an extra cost to you guys. Totally fine, that's just how they run their business. Suzuki's not doing that anymore. Um, reliability, I did a ton of research. I'm an analytical kind of nerd when it comes to big purchases or um, you know detailed things that I wanted to look at. And in my opinion, Suzuki does have the most reliable motor on the market. Uh, I think a lot of the reason that the Bass guys are just starting to run Suzuki's, it really just comes down to contingency. They don't have contingency programs for bass tournaments, I think at this point, um, but you're seeing a lot more pros that are picking up Suzuki. Cody Myers, Adrian, um, Dean Rojas, a few a few other guys are, uh, Brandon Carter running Suzuki's and have for, for many years. So I could see them getting into the contingency game for tournaments at a national, regional, even local level. But that is probably a deciding factor for some guys that fish. They want that, uh, that contingency bonus buck. So with me, I don't necessarily need that um, or care about that at this time and so that wasn't a deciding factor for me um, but I did a ton of research on how often big issues come up maintenance how easy it is to switch out say like a prop shaft or or things like that and it looks like these motors are not super tough to do some of this stuff yourself which also saves you some money on uh, on that side of it so lastly you know Suzuki's a, a uh, ocean motor guys so I, I say this to a lot of people that ask me why I trust it is our Mercury's and Evan Rude's and, and Yamaha's yeah they get worked hard on the bass boats out on the out on the lakes and stuff like that but they're not getting worked nearly as hard as an ocean motor that's running 50 60 100 miles offshore every day um, and, and really getting work done on it um, or really like putting in the work on the motor and, and using the actual motor so I trust that it's a super good brand based on the fact that ocean guys run them. Um, it's a lot of coastal motor, all that sort of stuff. So those were kind of the two deciding factors for me. Price point for you guys, it's kind of middle of the road. Um, the Honda was cheaper, the Yamaha was a little bit more expensive, the Mercury was the most expensive. So I fell right in kind of that mid range of, of what I wanted to spend and, and felt comfortable spending. Again, the five year warranty made that, uh, made that a easy choice for me. So those are kind of my thoughts on it. Let's get to the questions you guys are probably gonna care about or ask. And number one is gonna be, what is my top end speed? First, I'm in a heavy boat. Just in general, Rangers are heavier. An 08 is a heavy boat. It's a big hull, big gunnels. 
um, and then I'm loaded down. I have 10 foot rafters with the pumps in there with the four bank charger. I mean, I'm, I'm loaded to the max uh, in my Ranger. So what I am seeing, I also have, uh, let me backtrack a little bit. I also have an eight inch hydraulic jack plate. What I am seeing for me alone, full tanks of gas with no water in the live wells is I'm getting about 65 to 66 miles an hour trimmed right with the jack plate right. Um, and I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I don't need to go 72 miles an hour uh, on guide trips. I don't even need to go 50. So for me on my lake at Smith Mountain, excuse me, for my lake at Smith Mountain, 66 is great for me on just kind of an average day, just going out fishing. On the other end, I have had this boat to 69.7. That was with about a half tank of gas in here, no waters in the live well with uh, a wind at my back when the water started cooling. We're at 67 degree water temperature right now. Uh, generally, motors are gonna run better when the water is colder. So I think I can, by myself, uh, just fun fishing, I think I can get the boat over 70 miles an hour. Tournament load, fishing partner, full, t full live wells, cold weather, I think I'm gonna stick around that 66 to 68 mile an hour, um, mile an hour range. So, second question I think everyone's gonna be asking is what's my whole shot like? I had an Evinrude 250 uh, Gen 1 on here. I didn't like the whole shot I was getting out of it. Yes, it had a lot of torque. I think I was having prop issues and, and it's some few other things with that motor, but with this motor, I'm having no problem getting on plane with me plus three people um, in, in the boat full of gas. Um, it's, it's a quick hole shot. I'm happy with it. Um, it. It pushes the boat plenty fast, like I mentioned, but the hole shot for me, I'm not really having an issue. I did have to open the vents on my prop and I'll talk about that in a second, but I noticed that I was doing or getting actually better top end and better hole shot by opening the vents uh, on the prop. So, hole shot's good for a heavy boat. If it was on another boat, uh, I don't think hole shot would be an issue for anybody. Prop, these run huge props. I have a Scorpion or a Solus Scorpion 27 pitch um, on this motor. It's a beast. It's It looks like shovels, honestly. Um, that is what all the pros run. That is what all the re market research showed me that that is the prop that everyone is running. Um, I may try a four blade at some point, but I'm pretty happy with this. I've got a backup one already. Um, and that's the, the prop that I'm running. The last thing I would just talk about is, is kind of the low end torque. It does take a little bit of time for this motor to get up and gallop. Um, but it's it's a four stroke, so it's not gonna have that two stroke low end like the Evinrude did and uh, and get you up and running real, real, real fast. So again, going back to oh, kind of overviewing it, super happy with this purchase, would not have done it differently. Um, I'm getting about 67 to 69 top end by myself. Probably gonna stay in that 66 to 68 range when I've got a tournament partner and um, and the boat's loaded down. Reliability is awesome. Maintenance is super simple. Uh, whole shot is is great and I'm super, super happy with it. So if you guys have any questions on uh, where I bought my Suzuki price, um, how I propped it, um, anything kind of related to that, I'm happy to share share what I, uh, what I have as far as or what I've kind of learned, um, but I'm out here just idling around looking for bait. So fall is here, fishing's, fishing's about to pick up. Uh, if you're interested in a guide trip, check out my website, check out my Instagram, and uh, thanks for watching.